Hello, how are you doing? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, you are very, very welcome. If you're a regular viewer, then welcome back and welcome to week nine in our planning Christmas series. So we're well into December. Um, we only really have another two weeks after this one. How's it going for you? How are you getting on? How are your lists coming on, your food shopping, your gift shopping, your wrapping, your decorating? It's never ending, isn't it? I, I know that I feel like I am just spending my whole time just now organising Christmas. And don't forget that this series, you really do need to personalise for you. I'm trying to throw everything on here, biggest scale possible so that if that's how you like to do Christmas, then everything is in there for you. But you just need to remember to scale it back for whatever kind of Christmas you do. Eliminate the tasks that don't apply to you and just focus on the ones that do. Christmas has become a bit of a production in this house. And yeah, I'm kind of questioning some of the stuff that I've started, that have become traditions. At the end of the day, it's just what brings me joy. And I've realized through you know, pulling together this whole series that some of the planning and some of the buying and the shopping and the organising, those aren't really the things that bring me joy, but the end result absolutely does. And to get to that end result, you do need to put in the time beforehand. It's like anything, planning anything, whether, you know, an event of any kind, whether it's just planning a party or planning a wedding or planning a, a holiday, a vacation, a trip. Some of the planning aspects isn't the most joyful, but as long as you have that period dripped out with things that you do really enjoy and that the end result is what you really, really enjoy, then that's all that matters really. And, and I know that the Christmas period, the, you know, the few days before, the Christmas day, the Boxing Day, the, the in-between, the New Year, those are all the times that I absolutely love. And so putting on, in all this work beforehand is really worth it. Although when I was traipsing around the stores yesterday and it was so busy and it was crowded and the traffic was terrible and the parking was awful, I really was thinking, why am I doing this? but you do just need to remind yourself what the end goal is. And if those are the times that really bring you joy, then, you know, it's worth it all. And trying to plan it in this way is trying to eliminate as much of the stress leading up to it as is possible. So without further ado, let's get on with this week. So as you can see, I'm getting through the decorating tasks. I've got my um, skinny tree up in this room, looking in the mirror here. That's the size and shape that works best in this room. I've got my kind of main tree in the other kind of main family room in the back. I've got my fireplace garland up. I do still have a bit of decorating still to do, but this year I've broken it up and doing just kind of a little bit every day. And that's definitely helped. I haven't had that massive, overwhelming task of trying to get it all done in a day or two. And yeah, we've still got two and a half weeks to go, so plenty of time to get things up and thoroughly enjoy them, um, you know, in the, the run up and over the holidays. And that's really the first task on our list. It's a task creating tasks. It's kind of about the, the productivity side of things and the, the kind of getting things done. And what I'd like you to try and do this week is to take your to-do list each day, focus on your top task for that day, or maybe it has to be your top two tasks, or maybe even your top three tasks, depending on how much you still have to do. And you can do this in a couple of ways. You can either start the week by scheduling out your various tasks each day. You're really just breaking that to-do list down into smaller chunks. Focus on what you want to do each day, and that can sometimes help you relax because you know that you don't have to think about that today because it's scheduled for later in the week. In the same way as right at the beginning, we were pushing tasks back until weeks further away. Now we're getting closer to crunch time. 
we're just pushing them back by, you know, thinking, right, I don't need to do that today. I'm going to do it on Thursday or Friday or whatever. The other way that it might work for you is just each morning over breakfast with a coffee, whatever, decide what task or tasks you are going to focus on that day. That might be better for some people that are juggling so many things and you just never know what that day is going to bring. And so it's maybe not until that day that you can really decide what you're going to focus on that day. But if you start your day with those tasks in mind, then then it will just help you to actually get them done. Next on the list that you could be thinking about this week is to write a list of everything you need for your big Christmas holiday meals. So if you're hosting on Christmas Day or maybe you're doing a Christmas Eve dinner or over the holidays, New Year, whatever it is, write a list of everything you need for that dinner. Um, now, hopefully you've already planned your menus. We talked about that a few weeks ago, so you should know what you're having and it's just a case of actually compiling the list. Now, there's a couple of reasons for doing it now. Um, you could be picking up ingredients, you know, not the fresh things, obviously, but um, other ingredients you could be picking up with your regular groceries over the next couple of weeks. Just get them done, get them in, get them organised. It just puts it on your radar. Again, it doesn't have to be done this week, there might be other things in this week's list that I talk about that are more important for you to get done this week. And if that's the case, then you're going to focus on them. But maybe the rest of what I talk about this week isn't relevant to you. And then this is a task that you can slot in now. So your big holiday meals, think about all the ingredients that you need and make a list for them. Sticking with the food and drink category, another thing that you could be doing this week is to think about those things in connection with the big meals that you could get done now and freeze. So in our house, my husband Gavin is our Christmas chef. He does the Christmas Day breakfast and he does the, the main course for our a Christmas Day dinner, which is fantastic. Um, and I know that the two things that he likes to do about now is he gets his stuffing made and we put it in the freezer. And the other thing he does is he makes his gravy. Now he follows the Jamie Oliver um, Get Ahead gravy recipe, does it every year and every year it is a winner. And he does normally do it about now. So we get all the ingredients, get the gravy, I say we, he, I should correct myself, he, I do the shopping for the ingredients, he does the cooking. Um, so he makes the gravy and then puts it in the freezer and then that's it done. So that is something you can think about this week. What are the parts of the meal that can be made ahead and frozen? I think um, quite a lot of recipes out there for uh, roast potatoes. I've done that before where you kind of parboil your potatoes and you um, cover them in the kind of roasting ingredients and then you freeze them and then on Christmas Day you just literally take them out. I guess in the same way as when you buy frozen roast potatoes, it works in exactly the same way. You bring them out and you pop them in the oven. So just have a think about it. What are the things in that big meal that you could be doing ahead of time just to save yourself the stress and the time on Christmas Day? Next this week we are going to spend some time just uh, thinking about our overnight guests. Now, this won't apply to everybody, but I would argue that, you know, you might have overnight guests at another time of year. And so there will hopefully be some relevant tips and tricks and information in here that you can use either next Christmas or at different times of the year. Now, what I do realise is that not everybody's got the luxury of having a spare room just sitting there waiting to be organised and decorated and ready to welcome guests. Most of us have multifunctional rooms. I know that um, my guest room um, that one of my sons will be coming back to spend Christmas in is my office. It's um, where I work. It's full of office things. It's got Christmas presents in it. You know, there's a lot going on in there. It's, it's my wrapping stations in there as well. So I'm not at the point yet where I'm just ready to make that room over as a guest room. But there's a few things we need to be thinking about in advance. So that's why I wanted to slot that in here. And if you've got the luxury of having a room, you know, set aside that nobody uses, that you don't use at other times, then that's great because this week would be the perfect week to start getting that organised for your guests coming for the holidays. And for a lot of people, 
their spare room can often be a bit of a catch-all. So they've probably got loads of things stored in there. Maybe it's where you put your laundry baskets. Maybe it's, you know, do you know what I mean? Like catch-all, I don't need to explain to you what ends up in a catch-all room. But if that's the room that your guests are going to be staying in, then you do need to schedule in some time to declutter it, clear it out and get it guest ready. And so some of the things that you might want to consider putting into your guest room is maybe you want to make sure that you've got a couple of extra blankets on hand, a couple of extra pillows maybe, maybe a hot water bottle, collection of magazines, maybe you want to pop a little basket in there with some, you know, often forgotten items. There's quite a few different things that you can put in there just to make it more comfortable for your guests. One thing I would say is at this time of year, it is nice to try and make the room look and feel as cosy as possible and I would say that you definitely want to make sure that you've got one or two um, lamps in there so that they're not relying just solely on overhead lighting and that's particularly nice when guests you know retire to their room at night you want them to be able to read um, you know in their bed if, if that's what they want to do to unwind and that's really difficult if there's no bedside lamps there so even if you have to get just a makeshift bedside table I would definitely recommend if you've got overnight guests that you make sure that you have something at either side of the bed or just to one side if it's just a, a single twin bed if it's a double make sure you've got something either side of the bed with some sort of little lamp on it you can buy them really inexpensively in likes of Ikea or somewhere like that just make sure that your guests have a really cozy comfortable spot to unwind you know, do some late night reading if they want. Um, you know, sometimes when you're in a strange house, you perhaps don't sleep very well. And it's just nice to be able to pop on a bedside lamp and do some reading. So that would be my kind of top tip for overnight guests is make sure they've got a, a cosy bedside lamp. One other quick task to make sure that you've covered in connection with overnight guests is to make sure that you've checked if there are any specific dietary requirements, um, any allergies, anything like that. But also just to check, you know, what their favourites are, what they like to drink, what their favourite drinks are, what do they normally have for breakfast, just so that you can make sure that you've kind of got all these things covered and that you're going to, um, you know, create an environment that makes them feel as welcome and comfortable as possible. But yeah, it's just worth asking those questions this far ahead of time so that you can get prepared. Sticking with the category of overnight guests, I think this next area could make or break your Christmas. I think it's got the potential to be the most stressful thing um, cause the most stress over Christmas as far as having guests staying and that is around everybody's different expectations of what Christmas looks like and that's why my next task if you are having guests to stay for the holidays is to somehow find a way to have a discussion or convey your expectations of what Christmas might look like in connection to house rules, what sort of activities you're doing, what kind of time people generally get up, you know, all of those things. Um, because the stress comes from, as I say, people having wildly different experiences. You know, one family, for them, Christmas is all about sleeping in, staying in your pajamas all day, eating chocolate, watching movies and just completely relaxing. Another family might be the sort that get up early, get dressed, get out, go and do activities, go for long walks, maybe come home, play games and it's, you know, action packed, activity filled. Now, if people are guests in a house or if you're inviting people in and they don't have any concept of how you spend Christmas, that can be really stressful for your guests if they find themselves plunged into an environment that they're just not used to. It can also be really stressful for you as a host if you find yourself with guests that, you know, don't seem to be engaging with your idea of Christmas or they're used to being waited on hand and foot and they're not pitching in and, and helping out, you know, or they constantly want to be on the go and needing activities uh, to you know, stem off the boredom and all you want to do is just relax and eat chocolate and watch movies. It's a really, really tricky topic, but I would suggest there's a couple of ways to get around this. And that's why I'm suggesting that you give it some thought now. And that is maybe just to have that discussion about, you know, how you generally spend Christmas. 
find out how they spend Christmas. Get them to tell you what their Christmas looks like so that you can say, well, generally, you know, we do X, Y, Z, and then they can tell you what they normally do. And somehow in the middle, you can find a compromise. Or maybe it's, you know, about if it's perhaps a child that's bringing home a new partner or something like that, is delegate that task to them, is to you know, have a conversation with them about what Christmas looks like for them and so that they can tell them a little bit about your Christmas and, as I say, get those compromises reached. It's also for very, very practical reasons, you know, even down to things like what time you eat your big meal on Christmas Day. You know, you might have guests who come who routinely have their big meal at seven o'clock at night and so they're not used to your eating schedule. So, you know, they're eating all the snacks that are you know, around the place and then suddenly at one o'clock it becomes apparent that the big meal is imminent. Or the reverse, you know, they're used to eating at one o'clock and so they're, you know, starving themselves, keeping themselves for that big meal and thinking when's it coming, when's it coming, when's it coming and you're not planning to eat until seven o'clock at night. So definitely just now you want to have those discussions around, you know, what the day looks like, what the holidays look like, you know, so that you can reach those compromises, set those expectations. If you do have, you know, a couple of kind of really strict um, rules, I guess I'm thinking about things like allowing guests to smoke in the house or, you know, what your views are maybe on drinking alcohol or whatever that might be in your family. Make sure that those are all conveyed and have those discussions difficult though they may be, so that you're creating that comfortable, welcoming environment when your guests do arrive. Everybody knows what's expected of them. So I know you'll just have got your Christmas decorations out or you're in the process of, you know, just putting them up. But the next task on the list this week is to think about how you are going to store them when the time comes to take them all down and put them away again. And I know that when I got all my decorations out this year and I got everything out because I just wasn't sure what I was going to use this year and I was looking around everything thinking, you know, I've got some decent tubs among them. I've got some good organisation going on for some things and the rest of it was clearly just whatever bag or container I could find at the point that I was packing all the, the decorations away last year. So there's definitely a few kind of storage items that I can add to my collection. And just while you've got all the, de the decorations down um, and, you know, you're kind of going through them all and putting, you know, picking what you're going to use this year, it is a good time just to do a bit of an inventory of that storage and see what you need to invest in. And I think as far as what's available out there, I honestly think that IKEA has probably got some of the best, um, you know, best solutions out there. I'll try and drop some images in here of, you know, some of the, the top ones um, that I think that, that they've got just now. I know that if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me posting this week about the, the fantastic bag that they've got that I think only costs something like £1.75. And it's absolutely ideal, the perfect size for storing your uh, Christmas wreaths in compared to one that I saw in my local DIY store, which I think was about £15. And it was, you know, a specific wreath container. The IKEA one was just as good, if not better. It doesn't have to cost a lot. You don't have to buy all the kind of fancy bobble boxes and, and things like that if you don't need to. There are some great inexpensive solutions out there. But yeah, so this week's task, just take a look at all your decorations, storage containers, decide what you need to invest in and add them onto your shopping list just so that you've got them all ready for when you are packing your decorations away again. And what I will do is I will find links to all of the ones that I think look really good and I will drop them in the description box down below and you'll be able to just shop straight from those links. And just another one in the decorations category. This coming week is the perfect week to pick up any fresh decorations that you want to add to your house. I'm thinking about fresh florals, um, poncettias. I've been kind of having a look in, you know, local places just to sort of compare all the different prices and haven't done it yet, but that is on my list for this coming week to go out and buy a bunch of um, poncettias just to brighten up the place. How's your gift shopping going? It's a big one at this time of year, isn't it? And uh, I'm not through mine yet. I'm, I'm nearly there, but there's still a few things that I need to get buttoned up. So last week we did say, you know, if that category had kind of fallen behind a little bit, give it a really 
big push to you know kind of try and get it over the finish line so yeah just review that category this week just check that everything's on track check that all your orders are coming in that you've not um you know missed something that you've ordered and that it, it hasn't come in yet because we are just about getting to the point now where online orders become more difficult and I know that I can think of one or two things that I've just thought oh I'll, I'll order that I'll order that and then all of a sudden you realize you're running out of time to get anything ordered online so yeah just review that category see where you are with it it's it's difficult it can be really really difficult but if nothing else, give yourself a huge pat on the back for all you've achieved in that category. Uh, you're nearly there. You're nearly there. Hopefully you're finding your planner really useful and you're going to be able to use it again next year and all the years after that and tweak it as you go and make changes uh, throughout the years. And I would definitely suggest that after Christmas is all over that you have a little kind of debrief session with yourself, just having a bit of a look back and um, what went well, what didn't go so well, what changes would you make to your planning? for the future years but the one thing that I would suggest that you do now arguably we could have done it a few weeks ago but let's make sure that we slot it in now is to add a little section into your planner and just call it notes to your future self it's great to be able to look back after the event but there's a lot of things that you won't remember and so it's really useful to be able to not only jot them down at the time that it's happening so that you do remember for the future but also just jot down a little bit about how you're feeling at the time that it happens if you journal at all then you'll understand this and you'll realize the significance of it and i suppose i'm thinking about you know the whole point of all of this planning was to make things as stress-free as possible to eliminate as much of the stress and bring the joy back into Christmas. And let's just say that in the coming week, something tips you over the edge, sends you into a tailspin. In a few weeks when you're reviewing that, it's very easy just to be really dismissive of it or not even remember it because it's no longer significant. But it would be very easy just to think, oh, it was nothing. But if it was enough in the moment to cause you a lot of stress and send you spiraling, then you want to be able to remember exactly what that was so that you can eliminate it for the future. And that could just, you know, it could be things that are causing you stress. It could just be something you know like um you've given yourself too much to do in a particular week and you just think i can't possibly do all this this week next year and you want to divide your tasks up you know it's just a way to remember those things as they are happening and it will help you in that debrief session at the end of it notes to future self that's what you should be adding into your planner this week. Hopefully you're really enjoying this video, this series of videos about planning your Christmas. If you could at all, then please do give it a like, a thumbs up, leave me a comment uh, below just letting me know what your thoughts are how are you getting on with your christmas what bits are you finding useful and um, all of that and please do think about subscribing to the channel as well you've no idea how much that helps about 80 to 85 percent of viewers to this channel haven't actually subscribed yet so it would be hugely helpful if you could hit that subscribe button and if you are one of the relatively new YouTube viewers who's a bit confused by the whole subscribing thing, they keep hearing people tell them to, to subscribe and they don't know how to do it, then please do drop me a message, drop a comment below, reach out to me on Instagram, you know, whatever way you can find to do it. And I will explain how to do it. It really isn't difficult, but I can see how it might be confusing if you're new to YouTube and you just don't know how the whole thing works. So yeah, reach out and I'll explain all. And so that's it for this week. I hope you have a great week ahead. I hope you've got some lovely things planned. Maybe you're going to some parties. Maybe you've just got some time spending time with friends and family just relaxing at home whatever that might be i mean i think that's kind of really why we wanted to get ahead with our christmas planning so that we could relax into december and really enjoy the season and yes i know we do still have some things to do but hopefully that's getting less and we're able to just really enjoy the festive season so i really hope that you have enjoyed this video and i will see you in the next one